This is Ruth Leslie for the Historical Society speaking with Virginia Judson at her home on 21 Euclid Avenue on June 14, 1989. Good morning, Virginia. Good morning. I have a lot of questions to ask you. Uh, first of all, do you want to tell me when you moved to Hastings? Son, I, with our six months old son, moved to Hastings on June 1st, 1933. Oh my, that was right in the heart of the Depression still. We thought it was practically the end, but it was only the beginning. Really? And where did you move? You didn't live on Euclid Avenue then, did you? No, we lived on in, in, at 18 Minard Street, the little shingle house along the aqueduct. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh, did you own that or did you no, rent it? No, we rented it for $50 a month, which uh, was the, the, the most that we could afford to pay. From whom did you rent the house? It was owned by Bill Gould. Uh-huh. Uh, Bill Gould was related to Mrs. Buck, wasn't he? He was Mrs. Buck's beloved nephew. I see. Um, you were then quite close to the Zinser estate. Was yes. House? Yes. We did were. you know? Did you know the Zinsers at we all? We knew the Zinsers, but not well. Mm -hmm. um, did they? Ha they didn't have children your no. child's age or anything of that nature. I'd like to ask you a couple of questions uh, about um, your husband. What was what was his relationship to the very famous Cyrus Field? He was a. Turn it off. No, it's all right. It's okay. <laughs> I tried to. My husband's uh, grandfather, he was his great-grandfather. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. I'm not sure what I said about it. <laughs> well, we will worry about that, yeah. will we? Um, having arrived during the Depression, as you did, what was your impression of, of the community? Was it, did it seem very badly affected by the Depression? At first, of course, I was uh, feeling my way, and with a six-month-old child, I wasn't able to get around much, but I love the community. We both love the community from the start, and we never talked about moving anywhere else when, once we uh, got to know Hastings. <laughs> and how long did you live in the, in the Mentor and Cottage? Well, we were there several years, and the house was so small, and uh, I wanted to have a, another baby, and so we moved to another house where that we had more room, and, and even though it cost us $15 a month more. <laughs> <laughs> and where was that house? That house at a 56 Summit Drive. Mm -hmm. And uh, was there anything noteworthy or special about that house or the well, neighborhood? It, it had, um, I think it was 60 steps up from Summit Drive, <laughs> but it was possible to come in from Ballard Avenue into the kitchen, so of course that was always the entrance everyone used. Mm. Oh, was that the corner house then? No, that was, uh, uh, no, it was uh, along in the block toward, the, it was near the Dobbs Ferry line. I see. Mm. Uh, I, I know that you go to South Presbyterian Church. Yes. Did you always go to church there, or did you go to a Hastings church we, first? We um, visited around different churches. I was Presbyterian. My husband was an Episcopalian. And the Sunday that we first went to the Presbyterian Church, Meredith McCall, who was then the minister, greeted us and said, You're new. And I said, Yes, we are. And he said, to, to give me your address. So I gave him my address. And Saturday morning, he appeared at the door. I was ironing in the living room with a small baby and a pen. And he played with the baby. And he said, I hope you'll come back. And of course, I said, we will. <laughs> my husband, in those days, worked on Saturdays. And so we started going to that church. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> were, were there many yeah. Hastings people in, in the church? There were quite a few Hastings mm -hmm. people and people who became my good friends afterward. And it was a very friendly church from the start. Mm -hmm. And it didn't, it didn't affect you going to church out of, the, out of Hastings, and it didn't... We had, it did during the war somewhat when we were very, when gasoline was very scarce. And for a while at that time, I went to the Episcopal Church in Hastings with my husband. Mm -hmm. But he, um, we went back to the Presbyterian Church, and he became a member also. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm going to go backwards a little bit. Um, when you were first, li when you were living in the in the little Minturn cottage, mm -hmm. did you ha who were, who were your neighbors then? Do you remember? Well, that? our main neighbor, of course, the one that we thought so much of was Addie Buck, who was a fascinating person. She knew more about gardening than anyone I've ever met, and she combined love of birds and flowers and vegetables, and stories about them, in the most fascinating way. Mm. It was a pleasure always to be with her, and she taught me anything I know now about gardening. Really? She was a joy. Mm. Uh, okay. Tell me about having, buying the house on, on Euclid Avenue. How did that come about? Well, that was rather a long story because we still had practically no money. But there was a time when there were a lot of, a, a number of lots in Hastings and Dobbs Ferry that came on the market. I'm not quite sure what. And we had dreams of glory, so to speak. And we bid on a lovely lot in Hastings, which cost us all of $1,000, practically, on Villard Avenue. And we, um, we were thrilled. We were going to build a house someday, and we used to picnic on the lot and so forth. Finally, we came to our senses and asked our uh, asked a friend of size who was a who was an architect to draw us some simple plans. He did that, he got estimates on it, and a house was going to cost sixteen thousand. And that was more than we'd ever heard of, more that we could imagine paying for. And being very prudent and being very conservative, we had to give up the idea. It with, uh, I hated giving up the idea of never having a house, so I went to talk to the cashier at the Hastings Bank, and he was said... Was that the savings and loan? It was, no, that was the, uh, the um, uh, it was then known as the First National Bank of Hastings on Hudson. Oh, I see. And it became what is now the, the uh, uh, Bank of New York. Mm -hmm. And the cashier told me that there were great many homes that had um, been taken by the government because of non-payment of the mortgages. And if I would go to a certain realtor, uh, I could go to look at them. The upshot was we traveled around and looked at every available house. And finally, this house we loved, but we could, still couldn't see how we could pay for it. And finally, they came down on the price considerably. And uh, I had a wonderful uncle who was very kind to me, and he came up to look at the house and gave us $5,000 toward the house, which was the most wonderful gift at mm. just the right time mm. I've ever had. We rushed over to the realtors with our check <laughs> and put down the money, which was enough for the down payment. And ultimately, the house was ours. Mm, and, a, and a lovely house it is. Uh, was Jenny born in this house? Jenny was born, of course, she was born in the hospital. But I knew she was on the way the week we moved in. Oh. And it was a wonderful thing to think of. Yes. So this has been her home ever since she was uh, born. And this has been uh, si, si, my son's home uh, since he was uh, six months old. No, since he was, uh, oh, he was six mm -hmm. when we bought the house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, when you were living on Mintern, I'm jumping all over, That's sorry. Fine. When you were living on Mintern, did you have any contact with, with the Gribben house, you know, the, the big house that the Woodards used to live in, the one that you see from Marge 
Jason's window. Oh, the house next door? You no, know, you know, the, the, the huge house behind. Um, well, if, if you're not sure which one it is, I can't we can let it. Which house? You don't mean the house back here. That was well, I, that you can see from Marge's window. Which house are you referring This house. Was this the Griffin house? This no. is where the Rubenstein's are. Yeah. Is yes. that, is that yes. it from here? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't realize. Um, that you're really next yes, door to it. Yes, we did. We, there was an elderly man who was a, very much of a recluse who owned the house. And, of course, my husband was so friendly that he always got to know everybody. And he was working on the place. And Mr. Reedy, his name was, was working outside. <laughs> and then we ultimately decided, I think in the first year we were here, that this house had very, very little ground, and we felt we needed more ground for our children to play in. So we made a deal with him to buy a 25-foot lot next to our house, mm -hmm. and he charged us $1,000, which we thought we had to borrow on my husband's life insurance at that time to pay for it. We thought it was an outrageous price, but uh, we were very glad afterward that we had bought it. Mm -hmm. So you've had contact with the people in that I, house we, ever since? Yes, we, we always have, yes. And they've always been very friendly. We've never been close friends, but we've always, they've always had friendly neighbors and very friendly neighbors on both sides. Oh, that's lovely. Um, <coughs> Tell me about the neighborhood when you moved to Euclid Avenue. Was it kind of a homogenous neighborhood? Well, Were there it, it ethnic was, groups? It was very homogenous, very traditional, and almost all older people. My six-year-old son was the only child on the street, and our dog was the only dog. And I was <laughs> often embarrassed because the dog and the boy might run up people's banks and disturb their places without meaning to. However, the street soon changed, and we have had as many as 35 children on this one little street at one time. And it's a wonderful neighborhood. It always has been, and I hope it always will be. Have, have you found that it's changed over the years? It's amazing uh, how little the change. Oh, we, it's very much an ethnic neighborhood now, and we love that. It's, that's been a very, a very strong point in its favor, and it's always been a friendly neighborhood. We have had, there's been a particular feeling, I think, on Euclid about the neighbors in the neighborhood, and mm -hmm. we still have that. Mm -hmm. Uh, your children went to the Hastings School? My children went to the Hastings School. Uh, when my daughter was in high school, she, she had, went on a scholarship to the Master's School in Dobbs Ferry mm -hmm. as a day student, and she had a very good education. What about your son, Cy? Did he, go, did he graduate he, from Hastings High? He or? graduated from the Hackley School. Mm -hmm. uh, we sent him there for his last several years. Uh, because we thought he would, uh, he was not a good student. He he loved athletics, and we found they were a little lenient in Hastings about uh, athletics. And we felt it would be good for him to go to a school where he couldn't play on teams if he uh, didn't keep his marks up. And that <laughs> proved to be a very uh, <laughs> Proved to be very efficacious. <laughs> Not that I have anything against the Hastings High School. I think it's a splendid school, but and in his case, I think it was all right. Tell, do you remember any of your children's teachers when they were in oh, the yes, school yes. here? I particularly remember Mrs. Delanoy. In fact, I had to fight to get Mrs. Delanoy for Jenny. Uh, so I had had her, and I felt he, she had been such a wonderful teacher with him and when Jenny had another teacher I went over to school and said I've never asked a favor before but I um, I wish you could manage to put Jenny in Mrs. Delanoy's class and I let me see okay. oh all right yeah sure I <laughs> remember Miss Barton particularly 
Sally had Miss Barton, and he never seemed to learn a thing. She was always complaining about him. What did she teach? She taught math. Uh huh. And then when Jenny came along, I thought uh, she got Miss Barton also. And I uh, thought, oh dear, I wonder if Miss Barton will remember that she felt her that Jenny's brother wasn't a good student and was sometimes difficult. And then I thought, no, it's just up to Jenny and Miss Barton. And Miss Barton proved to be one of the best teachers Jenny ever had. Jenny was good in mathematics, and Miss Barton just urged her on instead of being, she would say, Jenny, you can do still better. And she was, it's just the difference in temperament, I think, of two children. Yes. <laughs> I learned my lesson. <laughs> Did, were you at? Were you and or your husband active in the school? Were you in the PTA? Yes, PTIA I was president of the PTA at one time, and he was very active in the Fathers Association. We tried to get interesting meetings, to get crowds, to get a good crowd out for our meetings, and uh, tried to get good speakers. We put on various sort of entertainments to raise money for, for things. Yes, we were very active in our day. Tell me, I, I've never heard of the Fathers Association. What was this? It may just have been a group of fathers. I don't remember any any distinct association, but I remember we had a number of, uh, of uh, fathers who were very interested, and we would get them to go out to meetings, and they were very vocal. I will say our school meetings and our village meetings were, it seems to me in those days, much better attended than they are now, and I feel badly about it. Of course, not as many wives worked in those t days, yes. and I imagine that made a big difference. But we had rousing school meetings, Did and uh, it, was, it was especially over the budget, as, as we do now, <laughs> and we had good, good uh, meetings, and people spoke up, and, and uh, they were listened to. D uh, during that time, uh, was, the, was, was the PTA uh, composed of both people from the so-called hill and the village, or uh, did you, was there a dichotomy there? We tried to be. At that time, I think there was much more of a division, which was too bad. We tried to get over that, but it was a hard division, mm -hmm. and, um, more or less. We, and we tried to see that the school board was represented in both areas. That seemed to be an important mm -hmm. way of handling it. Did the uh, uh, all, um, did did people other than from say Riverview Manor become officers of the PTA? Yes, oh, yes, we always. Did. Yeah, it was pretty much a matter of the uh, the. The head, the, the chairman, the president, and the vice president choosing the mm. people. Who were the, uh, when you were president, who were, do you remember who any of the other officers were? Jean Reed, who's moved away and been dead some time, was uh, uh, also, she, she had been president and she stayed on the board and she uh, was very active in it. Is that the Jean Reed who lived on Edgar's Lane? On Edgar's Lane, Lane mm -hmm. yes. She was a dear friend. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that sounds fine. In the um, early years when you first moved to Hastings, what was, what was shopping like? What was like to go grocery shopping? Did you go to the store or of course did we, they we deliver? Only had, uh, I think there were more deliveries. And it, it, we had, uh, uh, of course, we had no supermarkets in those days. You went around to different groceries. There was a small A and P. And there was a the nearest to a supermarket was Al's Market, and uh, but we pretty much went around from one store to another. What were some of the other stores that uh, you went to? Well, there were small uh, groceries, often that were just owned by uh, a couple or something else. And we had all our, I think, Ufer's hardware which is now the, um, the um, uh, Good Yarns, mm. uh, was as big as any store we had in Hastings, as I remember, but we had good, they were always a good, good store and good, uh, nice people, and the uh, 
uh, Joe Yadowitz, who had the Hastings florist, was a wonderful man, and he was very active. We had, uh, of course, uh, um, here I'm trying to think, you know who I mean, of the, the drugstore, the main drugstore. Oh, was, uh, yeah. I know perfectly well. Okay. Uh, <laughs> right at the moment, yeah. uh, Joe Algio. No, well, Joe Aljo, and then, uh, oh dear, Bernice just died. Oh, you know, Jacobson. At the Jacobsons. Uh, mm -hmm. They were already Jacobs. here then oh, when we yes, first came. they were, as I remember. I remember we used to go down there to Jacobsons. He had a soda fountain, mm -hmm. and I used to love uh, chocolate ice cream sodas. They were my panacea if I <laughs> was depressed. My husband would say, let's go down to Jacobson's and have a soda. <laughs> that to me meant more than any of the fancy things that people have now. <laughs> did, the, did your children play primarily in the neighborhood once they went to school or did they travel around Hastings oh, to play with? they traveled them? around a good deal. Not, not a wide circle. We had so many children in the neighborhood, but uh, they knew most of the children in school and various children would come home and I see some of them now. <laughs> That's lovely. Yeah. Did you drive in those days? Oh yes. Uh -huh. it, it would have been hard to get around if I hadn't. Yes, I drove. When did when did you start driving? As soon well, as you moved up here? Or? I had driven I'd driven a little um, at home, but I had never driven very much because I, my home was in Ithaca, New York, and my, uh, I would only go home for short vacations, and my, my mother died just before I was married, which was mm. a terrible blow to me, and I had my, we had my mother's car, which was a rather dilapidated Buick, and, uh, but we depended on that for many years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that I, I guess that was what life was like yes. <laughs> altogether. But your, all your friends were like that, practically all your friends. There were very few friends who had any more or did any more. I don't remember any social, any feeling of social inferiority or superiority or anything like that. That's great. You know, I don't think I've ever asked you what, what your husband did to earn a living. He was with the, uh, he was an ex-Marine, and he was with the, the um, um, furnace, with the steamship line, mm -hmm. and uh, he, it was, a, he uh, was, uh, uh, had come out of the Marines uh, looking for a job and got a job on the docks in New York, the furnace with the docks, and uh, at one time he became super, one of the superintendents. And he had one time uh, when Jimmy Walker was mayor, and when there was prohibition, Jimmy Walker sent an sent an order to the docks that uh, the um, uh, there was a lot of liquor being brought in from, particularly from Bermuda, and that any longshoreman caught bringing in liquor uh, on the dock was to be jailed immediately. Uh, the day that went into effect, I saw Long Charman unloading the ship, go on, looking thin, coming off, bulging. So he immediately called a policeman and had him, that man, jailed. He had another one jailed. He had a number of them. And that afternoon, he was surprised to see the same men back on the docks again. Mm -hmm. He called immediately the police department. And apparently the Jimmy Walker's order was only for cosmetics. Oh. Uh, he made quite a fuss about it. And the next day the order came through to um, uh, Furnace Withy to um, take Judson off the docks. And so mm -hmm. in that way he went into the passenger department and that's, he was very active in that. It was a wonderful job, and we also had chances to travel a good deal to Bermuda and some of the other places. Oh, that must have been wonderful. Great. <laughs> Did you do that yeah. with the children? Uh, no, because uh, in the early days, we, uh, when we were able to do it, we would have, um, we had, uh, I had a, my sister-in-law, who was very nice, when I had one child, 
and then after we had Jenny, we did get one or two chances that I got chances to go, but I didn't get many chances afterwards. You see, the war was on. And so we didn't travel with the children until Jenny was seven mm -hmm. and so I was 14. Now, we had a wonderful trip, all of us. Although Jenny remembers being left in, uh, on board the ship in the care of the, uh, the stewardess quite a bit <laughs> while we would go on, on things that we were parties and various meetings that we were expected to attend. And so I would have a glorious time going to the beaches. <laughs> mm. Well, Jenny's made up for it with oh, parties yes, since yes, then. Yes. I, she never really held it against us. <laughs> <laughs> She likes to tease me about it, though. Mm -hmm. 